Hi guys, Vex here, and for this video I have a, a story from Dungeons & Dragons that just deserves to be told. Today we will hear about the sad, disappointing fate of Varus Molinax, the young master. Ver Varus Molinax began his life as a young red dragon wormling who eventually clawed his way to the top of his cohort of siblings. Uh, he, through raiding and pillaging, gathered up a modest hoard of gold and magical items and layered in a cave in a place known as Mount Mulrund. Uh, at the top of a s uh, series of areas that made up a dungeon complex known as Mulrin's Doom. Uh, later in his life, he was approached by a, an evil Death Knight overlord known as Lord Darhand, and essentially an agreement was hatched between these two forces of evil that Varus Malinax would serve as a, the lord, the young, the young master of the first level of the dungeon. Lord Darhand played upon the young red dragon's need for uh, respect and fear and prestige, as red dragons are quite vain. And so Varus Malinax agreed to be the young master of the first level of Mulrin's doom. And it was there he lived and uh, amassed some uh, minions of red dragon wormlings for himself, as well as half, uh, half dragons that flocked to his service in the hopes of gaining prestige and riches from following uh, the Red Dragon, Varus Malinax. Then one day, a party of adventurers came and invaded his lair. And Varus Malinax uh, knew that these adventurers had killed some of his wormlings and some of his minions, and he was very upset and that they threatened his treasure hoard. And he was going to stop at nothing to slay these adventurers. Unfortunately for him, uh, something not many people expected happened. And at this moment, I would like to cut to the perspective of our adventuring band. Uh, I myself am playing a, uh, a bard, specifically a, a valor bard. And we had a very diverse makeup in our party of different classes, quite a large party as well, as well. But uh, we had a tiefling fighter who, in a previous adventure, had acquired a feather, a magical feather. And this feather, when cast upon water, would turn into a large uh, ship suitable for, I think, up to 20 medium-sized creatures to ride around in. And the ship would last up to 24 hours. And so basically it was just a feather, you throw it in water and it summons a ship. Poof. Uh, so you would think that this would be used to aid and travel across a watery area where you might not otherwise be able to get a large ship into, like say a lake, for example. And there was indeed a lake around Mount Mulrund. Uh, however, the adventuring party convinced a tribe of savannah elves to craft canoes for the party to sail across this lake and reach the mountain on these canoes. And so we did that, so we didn't need to use the feather for that. Um... So the adventuring band engages Varus Molinax, and the fight is not going that well. Uh, the, the breath attack on this dragon, combined with the breath attack from the wormlings and the half-dragon veterans, is taking a toll on the party. It was at that point that the tiefling fighter, with her magical feather, gets some holy water from, I don't remember if it was the cleric or the paladin, uh, they both had some holy water, but that's not important. The fighter gets some holy water and throws that with the feather at the dragon. 
And so Varus Molinax sees this vial of holy water with a feather stuck on it and doesn't think much of it until the little jar or vial or whatever container of holy water shatters. The feather touches the water and turns into a ship. Now this ship is about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, it was said to be about 50, 50 or 60 feet in length and uh, quite wide as well. And this ship takes up most of the dragon's lair. Um, and the ship lands on top of Varus Molinax, who promptly fails a strength save and becomes pinned underneath this giant ship. And it is at this moment that I would like to tell you guys that it's not just a normal ship. Mm -mm, nope. It's a it's shaped like a swan. Like it's got like it's the 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 bow of the ship has like a swan head, I believe, and like the, there's like swan feather motifs decorating the sides of the ship. Like it's a friggin' giant swan boat that just got summoned in this dragon's lair. And so, Varus Molinax, the young master of the first level of Mulrin's Doom, is now crushed underneath this swan ship uh, towards the south side of his lair, with his head poking out from underneath. And he can still breathe fire when it recharges. And he can still bite. Um, and it's at that moment that the that me, with my bard, I have the spell of polymorph. And so I polymorph myself into a giant ape, who's actually even bigger than the dragon. And I jump on top of this ship, adding my weight to it. So now he's like making, you know, strength saves with disadvantage to try to get out from under the ship, and he just can't do it. And then I make uh, my athletics roll, and I grapple the dragon. I just grab the dragon's, and one, with one monkey fist, I just grab the dragon's neck, and I pin him down underneath the ship. And at, at that point, as a giant ape, I just start beating him with my fists. Two attacks every turn. Fist, fist. Boom, 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 boom. Um, dealing pr like 28, 20, 20 damage a hit. And he's prone. So he's prone under the ship. So I'm swinging with dis with a, I'm swinging at him with advantage. And other people are getting in there and attacking him. And we like we did this dragon so dirty. Like it wasn't it wasn't fair what we did to this dragon. But I as I was so happy that we got to use that swan boat in combat like this. And uh the DM awarded uh the Tiefling Fighter inspiration for that. Which I, I greatly approve of that choice. I think she deserved it. And the poor dragon, Varus Molinax, at the end of his life, I punched him. With, I just I told the group that I'm going to just, for my last attack, because he was on death's door, I was just going to literally rip his head off his body. And I rolled a punch attack, and I I basically over I overkilled him by about 26 hit points. So I put him at negative 26, and the DM's like, yep, you just ripped his head right off. And so I'm sitting there as a giant ape going, <laughs> you know, making monkey noises, role-playing a giant ape, just holding this guy's, this, this, this dragon's head in my hands, above my head, like dancing around on the ship, you know, in jubilant. And that is how the story of Varus Molinax, the young master, comes to an end. Although, I fully intend to use his skull to make a helmet of magical power for myself. Because a red dragon skull, that's, that's pretty good loot right there. You could do something with that. 
Uh, maybe the helmet will give fire resistance, or maybe the helmet will be able to shoot a fire beam of some kind. Who knows what we'll come up with, but uh, it's going to be great. But, th but that, is, that is the story of how a swan boat killed a red dragon. Until next time, as always, take it easy.